here with the swole on, the fro on, and if you need the explainer, I'm the Alpha Tamer, and today we are here with a very special Digimon TCG Team Luxury deck profile by the man himself. Will you please introduce yourself? What's up, Tamers? It is Chris Puiguegos here with Luxury Gaming once again to do a deck profile. Um, I had gotten 13th place in the most recent May 4th Ultimate Cup hosted by Core TCG. So without further ado, I played uh, Mirage Galgamon, so I'm going to go into my card selection for that deck. So starting off with the eggs, I played uh, three Wanyamon. Uh, because Bukamon is restricted, this is kind of our next best egg to draw a card if we have a blue tamer. And then we still played the one restricted Buka for jamming, as if our opponent has a Digimon with no more sources than us, we get jamming. Uh, this egg was pretty much busted, so that's why they had to restrict it to one. And we still play it. Moving on to our rookies, we have four copies of EX4 Gaumon with the on play that makes both players draw a card from the top card of their deck and the inherit of when a card is added to your opponent's hand by an effect, gain and one memory during your turn once per turn. Uh, this is kind of our go-to rookie as it just helps us gain a lot more memory throughout the turns as long as it sticks around. I did end up playing four copies of BT15 Betamon uh, the on play really doesn't exist. We play it for the inherit jamming because they had to restrict our Bukamon, so we have to get jamming somehow out somewhere else. So we do it with our rookies because we don't have access to BT16 Galgamon yet to get a jamming inherit. I played a one copy of Gomamon, um, just kind of as a tech choice sometimes, not being able to start of our main trashing a source from our opponent's Digimon, especially like protection effects. And then not being able to be blocked could sometimes come out. And then it's sometimes a resilient piece where if they kill our stack during their turn, the Goma gets to come out and you start building a new stack. I also played one copy of BT11 Gao. Uh, the on play just helps us reveal the top three cards of our deck, and we add a Digimon with Galgamon in its name and one blue tamer. And then it will still forever baffle me, and this will be the one that card that grinds my gears. It trashes the rest for this blue card. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of weird it's so weird uh, for level 4's we have 4 copies of EX4 Galgamon uh, much like the other Gaumon it has the inherit of when a card is added to our opponent's hand via an effect gain a memory so that really helps us continue gaining more memory and then bounce level 3 so it's very useful against like Numimon other decks that are trying to rookie rush you that way you can bounce their level 3's back to their hand for a good tempo the other level 4 that we play is uh, BT13 Galgamon. Uh, when digivolving, if we don't have a tamer named Thomas H. Norstein, we get to play one Thomas from our hand without paying the cost. So sometimes getting to play a tamer for free is good. And then the uh, all turns, while our opponent has 8 or more cards in their hand, this Digimon will gain plus 1k DP. So that can help really offset some DP minus math. Maybe your opponent is trying to figure out, oh, I can probably attack over their dude, but no, it's plus 1k. Or, again, when you go to your level 6, it's a 12k, gets becomes a 13k, and helps it live against other 12ks in security. Uh, I played one copy of Lanamon for my hybrid for game, uh, and then most of the time, some when Digivolving, put a level 3 under so I can get extra Inherits and get Jamming. Level 5s, I played three copies of the BT11 Machiao. This is the one where you get blocker and then plus 2k DP for every four cards in your opponent's hand till the end of their turn. So you get a really big blocker. It's really good against his aggressive decks. The all turns once per turn inherit when an effect adds a card to an opponent's hand on the Digimon. Allows you to get some extra attacks. Maybe swing if you want to still use your, utilize your blocker when you go to your level 6 on suspense so that we can still block. And then I also played three copies of Zudamon Ace. This is our go-to Ace Digimon for helping to strip pesky inherits and bounce Digimon. Uh, this card is really insane against other Aces since you basically get to play it for a cost of one if you bounce their Ace or strip their Ace. And then uh, one copy of EX4 Mach Gao because this is unfortunately restricted. Uh, it bounces level 4s. It's an insane tempo play against decks like Numamon. Just bouncing a level 4 back to their hand, possibly gaining memory from the Galgamon Inherits. And then the when attacking Inherit, of if my opponent has 8 or more cards, unsuspend this Digimon. So it's really honestly unconditional unsuspend once per turn when attacking. 
I played one copy of Arrow V for my jammer, and then sometimes to get security attack plus one on my level six. Sometimes it came up, sometimes it helps me jam so I can get a free check in, and then did you evolve to my level six? Speaking of level sixes, we really have this main go to one is the BT11 Mirage. This card is one of the most insane floodgates still. When you Digivolve, you get to bounce one of your opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon. And then if no Digimon's bounced by that effect, you get to take the top card of their security and put it to their hands. You just get to sometimes burn a security. And then all turns, once per turn, when an effect adds a card to your opponent's hand, you gain one, uh, gain one memory for every four cards in their hand. So most of the time, I'm honestly gaining back two memory, three memory, maybe even sometimes if the game goes long enough, four memory and practically evolving for free. And then it just sits there as a floodgate, making it that so my opponent can't get extra cards into their hand with effects. Otherwise, it risks passing turn, gaining me extra memory. And then for the other level six, uh, BT-13 Mirage. It's not as great as this one. Unfortunately, when it digivolves, it just bounces a tamer to their hand. And then the all turns is when a card is added to your opponent's hand, you get to play a Thomas for free. Uh, it's a pretty decent tempo play against decks like Red Hybrid. Uh, even Lugamon, if they have their Essential Tamer on, in play, you get to bounce it, play a Tamer. And then this does have Evade. The Evade does actually come up. So that way, if they try to kill your stack, you can just suspend it to not get destroyed. For our level 7s, we played three copies of Mirage Gagamon Burst Mode. Uh, this really is our boss monster, aside from Mirage Gagamon. As when you Digivolve, you can return one of your opponent's Digimon, any Digimon, to their hand gain a memory for every four cards in their hand so just like mirage you just really get to just gain a bunch more memory and then also when attacking if they have nine or more cards which is pretty likely in digimon with how much you draw and search you get to unsuspend and then you bought deck cards from their hand until they're at eight cards so that really messes with them as you could possibly bot deck very crucial pieces preventing them from evolving into new lines and trying to answer um, obviously, most of the time, you pretty much burst Digivolve this, so you'll Digivolve for free by returning a Thomas. And then just at the end of the turn, just trash it to go back into this Floodgate Mirage, so you can keep Floodgating them again. For our Thomases, we played three BT4 ones. Uh, this is just on-play draw a card. It helps you dig deeper. It's a pretty cheap play. And then if my opponent has eight or more cards, I can suspend Thomas to his unsuspended Digimon with Gao in its name. So that helps you get you extra attacks uh next we played three bt13 thomas this is the mem setter this is also when one of my digimon with gaomon or galgamon in his name attacks i can suspend it to make us both draw a card uh this helps re-trigger these mirages to gain more memory and it kind of combos with burst mode so after the first attack we put them back down to eight cards we attack again suspend thomas to make us both draw that way they're back at nine we activate the one attacking again because this one attacking is not once per turn so as long as they have nine or more cards, you can keep unsuspending and bot decking until they have eight. So by utilizing these Thomases, we get multiple attacks in. Uh, next, we got our option cards. I have four mental trainings as our pretty typical searcher and ways to reduce Digivolution costs. So making it able to Digivolve into Mirage Gao for two. And then possibly, you know, gaining two memory or more back. So practically evoing this for free or just net gaining memory. Uh, two copies of blue memory boost as it just helps us dig four cards and then maybe gain two memory later. Two copies of full meteor impact. This was my uh, hope that it's in security bomb as it just bounces a Digimon to my opponent's hand and then gains a memory for every four cards in their hand. And then security effect is just return a Digimon. And I mean, if you have a Mirage Gagamon out, you bounce their Digimon. Gain memory from Mirage. If you played full mood Meteor Impact, you gain memory from back from it. So it's despite being printed as an eight cost option, honestly, it plays more like a six cost, and it's really good also against Ace Digimon with Overflow to gain even more back, more memory back. And then finally, our one copy of Ice Wall as our restricted card. As sometimes there's turns where we need to stall for a turn and make our opponent think, oh. I can't attack, otherwise I keep losing two memory for that turn, or the security effect of just gaining two memory and security. Uh, so that is my Mirage Gagamon deck list that got me 13th place today in the Ultimate Cup. Um, I played against, for the eight rounds, I played against Machine Dramon, 
Uh, shout out to Huang Zero for my round one opponent for that friendly fire. <laughs> uh, luckily, it was a race to just see if he gets Chaos Dramon to prevent being bounced, but I could outpace him. I played against uh, Rapidmon. Uh, luckily, my opponent did not see his level 5 to prevent from being bounced, so I could just bounce his Digimon. Played against Blue Flare, and honestly, Blue Flare is pretty good against, or we're pretty good against Blue Flare. Uh, this Mirage Galgamon, even if they strip all the sources from it, it can still sit there as a floodgate, meaning that they cannot draw cards from opposing Wanyamons or risk losing memory. I played against Red Hybrid, and luckily, our blocker, Mokgao, came in at clutch a lot of the time. So that way I don't get chipped a lot. Then against another level uh, rapid. Uh, unfortunately, we drew for that one because he saw multiple level fives. And uh, the rapid mon matchup is really grindy between him going into rapid mons, DP reducing, and me bouncing things. It was really hard to keep Digimon. Uh, my next two rounds were against Yellow Vaccine, which were honestly probably my hardest rounds. There's so much DP negation uh, reduction there making it harder to keep a Digimon sticking. And Venusmon is the scariest Digimon that I can think of for what I want to, what I don't want to see against, as Venusmon will often shut off when Digivolving effects, and most of my Digimon have when Digivolving effects. Uh, finally, for the final round, we were at Table 2, but unfortunately lost to Royal Knights. Um, for that matchup, we really need this Gemming Inherit for Betamon, because Royal Knights plays such high DP Digimon and such a high quantity that it is very risky to swing, even with our 12Ks, without jamming. And that was my tournament run for this Ultimate Cup. All righty. Well, Chris, uh, congratulations. Um, as you guys heard, he is a part of Luxury Gaming. Um, we, are, or we both are. Uh, make sure you guys are checking us out. Chris, do you have any shout outs before we go? Uh, once one, once again, want to shout out Luxury Gaming for being us, for having us on the team, and then a shout out to our sponsors, MetaMat and Dueling Guard. Alrighty, Chris. Well, thank you so much for the profile. Congratulations again. You're a monster. This man has taken an Ultimate Cup with Mirage, and he's topped another one with Mirage in a completely different format. Can't even believe it. All right, you two, with that being said, Antics here with the swole on the fro on, and I already gave you the explainer, but I am the Alpha Tamer. Peace.